and we're going to finish up with an application in section 4.5 we'll look at other applications but a nice application of exponential functions which require logarithms to solve is compound interest everybody likes to make money so we love to study compound interest so we have a problem like we saw previously when we were computing the amount of money in a savings account so I'm going to invest $800 in an account paying 4% interest the new question we can answer now is the question about time. How long will it take my money to double if the interest is compounded and we're going to do quarterly and then continuously? So we can find the doubling time, you can find how long it takes to triple, whatever. A lot of problems will even give you a specific number. How long will it take my money to grow to $10,000? Okay. Whatever that value is, you set it equal on the other side and solve for the exponent. So we remember our equation for compound interest if it's compounded a certain number of times per year is the amount of money in the account will equal the principal your initial investment times one plus r over n your interest rate divided into n payments to the nt so, so a is the amount you want the account to wind up with which on a doubling time problem it's going to double from 800 to 1600 uh, p is the initial investment the 800 dollars in this problem r is your interest rate 0 0.04, I always express that as a decimal. N's the number of times it's compounded, which quarterly means four, four quarters in a year. And T is time, that's our unknown. Okay? So we plug in everything that we know, the only thing we don't know is time. So we have, again, if you double 800, you get 1600 equals 800 times 1 plus R over N's 0 0.04 over 4 to the 4T. And then you have to isolate the exponential first. You want to do as much algebra as you can before you start bringing in logarithms. Eventually we're going to have to use a log to solve for the power. But you divide both sides by 800 and since it was a doubling time problem we get 2. You'd always get a 2 over here. So you actually don't even need to know 800 to find the doubling time. You double the, the p-value and put 2p over here. You divide, you get a 2. Okay. And then I would go ahead and compute all of this except for t. You can even do the power. You can do what's in parentheses for sure. You have 1 plus 0 0.04 over 4, which is just 1.01 .01 if you want to go ahead and do that. But you can go ahead and do the power of 4 also because by exponent rules we can separate the, the 4 and the t because if we thought of it as being the expression to the 4 to the t, you'd multiply and get 4t. So I can go ahead and evaluate 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 4 and the whole quantity to the 4th. Okay? So be careful when you do that. The parentheses are important. Now on these, you don't want to round off a whole lot. You will completely throw an answer off, so use all the digits your calculator gives you. Okay? So we, we set it up, divided both sides by 800, and got a 2 over here, and then I'm going to go ahead and evaluate 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 4 to the 4th, and I got 1.04060401 to the t. Now we're stuck if we don't use logarithms. So we're going to take a logarithm of both sides, use either one that's on the calculator. I like to always stick with natural log. So I take the natural log of both sides. The natural log of 2 is equal to the natural log of our exponential part. And you can drop the t to the front. And then you just divide. you got natural log of 2 divided by natural log of this big decimal number. You can type that in the calculator and you get 17.4 years. Okay. So again, we have a formula for compound interest. It was a doubling time problem. $800 was P. We doubled that, got $1,600. R is 0 0.04. When it's quarterly, these ends are 4, and we're solving for T. Divide by 800. Go ahead and compute the numerical part. But to solve for the power T, I take natural log to both sides, drop T, divide. Okay, we're going to conclude with an example where we do continuous compound interest, so the formula is a little different. It's actually easier because it has e in it and we have natural log. So we know when it's compounded continuously, if you take the limit as n goes to infinity, you wind up with a equals p e to the rt. And everything's the same. e is the the constant, 2.7 something, the irrational number which is on your calculator. p is the $800. I have the same setup here. We're just going to change and do it continuously. R, the interest rate, is 0 0.04, and then if we double, we want A to be 1,600, so we plug that in, we get 1,600 equals 800, E to the 0 0.04 T. Just like before, the first steps always divide, isolate the exponential, so again, it's a doubling time, so I get 2 equals E to the 0 0.04 T. 
and then you can use any log you want but definitely you got an E do natural log take natural log of both sides and it'll wipe out E so you get natural log of 2 equals natural log of E to the power since natural log is base E they wipe each other out natural log of E to a power is just the power always so you get natural log of 2 equals 0 0.04 T divide by 0 0.04 and you've got T and you'll notice it was almost the same as the last problem that's why I carried it out. I would probably just round a year as normally, but I carried it out an extra decimal place to see. When it was four times a year, it was 17.4 years, which is almost practically no difference here when it's continuously. You get 17.3 years, but it's a little bit different mathematically.